Hey everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the Buffalo Bills and their rookie quarterback drafted seventh overall, Josh Allen, do battle with Jared Goff and the Los Angeles Rams. I'll see you again with scores and updates at halftime. But for now, it's my distinct pleasure to hand things over to our broadcast team. It's Brandon God and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with the Buffalo Bills. I'm Brandon Gaunt along with Charles Davis. Charles, good matchup here. A couple of playoff teams from a season ago. And just think about how the NFL works, partner. Eight teams that made the playoffs the year before didn't make it last season. So there's always going to be parity in this league, and guys have to be ready to go. Just because you made it the year before doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get back again. I can't say that's something you see often, but it worked out for them. Tie game, they try to get the ball back, and they do. You know, when I was a kid, my dad used to give me a lot of tales about this guy called Old Mo. I never knew who Old Mo was. Now I do. It's old momentum, and they want to keep riding it. Old oh, Mo. No. Is that a true story? Or? True story. Oh, I love your pops. Now a play fake here on first down. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. carry here for Todd Gurley. What a spin. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. On second down, here's Goff. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he'll go down at the 28. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. Zerline good with a PAT, and it's now a 7-0 game. Just a four-play drive that time. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown.
Oh, well, look at this. They got the 7-0 lead in the pocket, and they're going to try an onside kick. And the Bills are going to recover. Josh Allen leading the Bills offense onto the field. And now that we're toward the end of the rookie campaign of Josh Allen, how would you assess it? How has he played? I think there have been some flashes where you've seen the Josh Allen and why he was drafted where he was. But I think when we're talking more about his running than his throwing, I don't know that that's a great thing, even though he's shown us some flashes of running ability that we just didn't expect. One three-week stretch, weeks 12 through 14, 99 yards, 135, 101 on the ground. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Samson Abukum coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Okay, partner, a couple points of interest right here, all right? Offensively, we see that they came out through on the football, but maybe more importantly, the blitz that came defensively, they got right after it. And you were telling me pregame before we came on air, you think this is something we could see a lot. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because this is a unit that wants to play the game on their terms. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. All right, here we go. From the gun, it's Allen. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Charles Clay is tied in the intended target, and it's third down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Allen. And that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Well, Charles, help me break down the Rams here as we get to the home stretch of the season because they still have one of the best records in the NFL, but after that wild Monday night win over KC on November 19th, haven't looked as sharp. And sometimes when you have a streak that they carry around and they're playing at such a high level offensively, any dip looks like the worst dip in the world. But they have had their struggles. Quarterback Jared Goff, his quarterback rating at Chicago and then again against Philadelphia in Week 15, definitely took a hit. They have not been the team we have seen before. And teams have figured out a little bit of a formula to make it harder on them offensively. But I wouldn't put it past head coach Sean McVay to get it figured out and get that team back on track. Because once they hit the playoffs, I still think they'll be a team that no one really wants to play. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. It's the Rams out to the early lead. We're back to Southern California right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. And they've got it here with a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On first down, it's Gurley. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. An unlucky number here, a loss of 13 on the play. And it'll make this a second and long. It's hard to stay mad at a player who fights for yardage, even if it's not successful. But on this play, I'm just looking at what the defense did. We always talk about gang tackling and getting more people to the football. How about the job they did there, the discipline they had? No matter how hard he fought, more and more people showed up and help create that big loss of yardage there. That's the kind of play that the defense gets excited about. Goff in the offense with a first and 10. And he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Right. 
Now a first down throw. Gone. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Complete. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. On first and 10, gone. He's going to rifle one deep left, and it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Brandon Cooks, 32 yards. And the Rams add on to their lead. Zerline connects on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. A drive there of just four plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Zerline out now to kick this one away. Isaiah McKenzie now on the return. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Buffalo Bills come back out here on offense, and this is a team that last year they got the playoff monkey off their backs. We remember the scene, the final oh, weekend yeah. in the Bills' oh, locker room. How great was how that? How special that was, but look, no such joy in 2018. Remember the quarterback confusion early on? Was it going to be A.J. McCarron, Nathan Peterman? Was Josh Allen ready? And it's going to turn into a sub-500 season, Charles. Yeah, notably, they did have a couple of big wins, one of them being the Minnesota game back in week three, won 27-6, a game no one saw coming. Josh Allen actually had some big moments, mainly with his legs instead of his arm running the football. They do have something to build off of, though, with him, I believe. The biggest thing, though, beef up that offensive line. He took way too many hits, too much pressure in the pocket for him to produce like they would expect. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There was nothing available there for him. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting them in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And now the Bills are going to stop it as they call a timeout. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Goff and his guys not coming off the field. They're going for this. They are going for it. Goff. And a throw here that's complete. And they'll get him down up past the 15. Big pickup of 12 yards on fourth down to keep this drive from stalling. Goff in the offense with a first and 10. And he's 8 for 8 now, throwing the ball to start the game. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. Got some room at the 30. And now running right through it. Fighting through it. He's got space. The 40. The 30. 10. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered.
Sure. How did they get that done? And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter? Zerline now for the PAT. Zerline good with a PAT. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one. There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Now it's gone, off the bootleg. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. And that is incomplete here. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And that'll bring up second down. Well, partner league-wide, I think we're set up for a wild month of January. It seems like this season, more than others, we've had a number of teams that you maybe say, hey, they're the Super Bowl favorites. Kind of the Rams early, then it was the Chiefs, Patriots kept winning, then the Saints, and now, heck, maybe even the Texans or the Bears could claim that moniker. Yeah, it's going to make for a wild month of January. And you just wonder right now, are we missing a team or two that's just a little bit outside the playoff hunt? Could they get hot and be those teams you don't want to play? and carry that momentum all the way to the Super Bowl? Yes, I'm looking at the Indianapolis Colts as one of those teams. Throwing on third, gone. And the Bills are gonna get him as he goes down. Jerry Hughes with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. To me, the defense was looking a little gassed near the end of the first half, but they come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. All right, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says, and he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Samson Abukum coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. And well, he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Let's go. Green, 39. Now Allen, got to have this one. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. The Bills drive stalls out on fourth down. And this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. 
Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can actually be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against the win and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Now it's gone. And he will find his man on the outside. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. First down, L.A., golf finding Higby. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. Partner, they're less than two minutes ago in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. And this is going to be incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. So a bit of a weird kick there. That wasn't an overly long attempt, but that never had a chance. You almost wonder if he might have maybe got that one on the laces because it kind of knuckled on him a bit. And this one winds up in empty possession. On first down, Allen over the middle complete. That's McKenzie. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Allen now looks to throw. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. On second down, it's McCoy. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Throwing his Allen on third. He's going to let it fly, and he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first, but at least it's fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's fallen off. When a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So there's one person he can lean on. He's going to have to lean on that guy right now. 
Well, that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team because they see this starting to happen as well. So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is, and what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side,